Come join me on my second channel, Jaguar Gator 8, where we'll talk all things college football. New video drops every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch the latest video. And now, on with our feature presentation. A lot of people consider the 2000 Ravens to be the greatest defense ever assembled, and it's not too hard to see why when you watch them play. They led the league by allowing just 10.3 points per game. They shut out four opponents and held their opponent to single digits in 12 out of 20 games, including the playoffs. In four playoff games, they allowed one offensive touchdown and won the Super Bowl in convincing fashion with maybe the greatest defensive performance in Super Bowl history. And there were so many great players on that defense, from Defensive Player of the Year Ray Lewis to Rob Burnett, who had 10 and a half sacks, to Rod Woodson, to Sam Adams, to Peter Boulware, to so many others. But one of the most influential people on that defense was this man right here. This is Tony Siragusa, otherwise known to many as Goose. Goose had an incredible 12-year career in the NFL, spanning his time with the Indianapolis Colts and the Baltimore Ravens. And he's had a lot of great moments as one of the premier run stuffers that the game has seen. But if there's one moment that truly exemplifies his career and how tough he was and how much he loved football, it was this game right here. Because on October 22nd, 2000, during that incredible 2000 season that he and the Ravens were having, he was about to do something that is almost unfathomable. Imagine being carted off the field, thinking that you might be paralyzed and might never play again. And then, you return to the game one hour later. Well, that's exactly what Siragusa was crazy and gutsy enough to do. And this is the story behind what might be the craziest moment in the great career of Tony Siragusa. Before I talk about the actual moment in question, we need some context to understand just who Tony Siragusa is, how great of a player he was, and how the game itself was going. It's October 22nd, 2000 and we have a big AFC Central matchup on our hands in Week 8 between the Baltimore Ravens and the Tennessee Titans. At this point in the year, this might have been the biggest game on the entire NFL calendar, as this was a battle for supremacy in the division. The Titans enter this game at 5-1, and one, and the Ravens enter this one half a game back at 5-2. and two. The winner of this game takes control of first place, and creates some separation in the rest of the conference, as there were seven teams at the time with four or more wins fighting for one of the six spots. In other words, win this game, and at the halfway point, barring a crazy collapse, you're practically guaranteed a playoff spot. And one of the reasons why the Ravens were in such a good position, and their best position in franchise history, was because of their defense, and in particular, the play of Tony Siragusa. Baltimore needed all the help they could get defensively, because I can tell you this much, the offense wasn't going to do anything, as evidenced by their last game, a 10-3 loss to Washington which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Siragusa wasn't exactly filling up the stat sheet, but that wasn't his role. His role was to clog up the middle, make life difficult for opposing rushers, and let the other talented guys on the defense clean up. As Siragusa said on his role in helping make the defense as great as it was, if I have a 20% chance to make the tackle, and I know Ray Lewis has an 80% chance, I'm going to block who I can, so Ray is free and clear to make the tackle. And this philosophy was a big reason why Syracuse was so good, and why the Ravens were so good on the defensive side of the ball. By this point in his career, Syracuse had been in the NFL since 1990, and had crafted quite the career as an undrafted free agent, having started in 127 games so far, including every game for the Ravens in 2000. He was so good that when he held out at the start of training camp in 2000 for a new contract, the Ravens gave it to him and added two years to his deal, because they knew how valuable he was. Usually, with training camp holdouts, the player is the one that winds up caving, because they either want to get back on the field, they don't want to miss game checks, or they're racking up tons of money in fines. This was the rare instance where the team ended up caving, because they knew how much he meant to the team and to the defense. With Syracuse back in the lineup, through the first seven games of 2000, the Ravens were a force to be reckoned with, as no team could run on them. Over their first seven games, the Ravens allowed just 405 rushing yards for an average of around 57 per game. In their opener against Pittsburgh, they held Jerome Bettis, one of the best running backs in football and a future Hall of Famer, to 8 yards on 9 carries for an average of less than 1 yard per carry. 
you can learn more about that game by clicking the card in the upper right corner. In Week 3 against Jacksonville, the Jaguars started Chris Howard at running back. He fumbled twice and was held to 7 yards on 8 carries, averaging less than 1 yard per carry and never playing in the NFL again after that game because of how poor the Ravens made him look. You can learn more about that game by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And in Week 4, in a 37-0 win against the Cincinnati Bengals, Cincinnati ran the ball 16 times. They picked up 4 yards, with Corey Dillon, maybe the best running back in the NFL at the time, having 9 yards on 12 carries. The team averaged .25 yards per carry. If you gave the Bengals 39 tries to get a first down, and all they did was run, they still wouldn't pick it up. Baltimore's run defense was elite, and Siragusa was one of the big reasons why. Even if he wasn't making his presence known in the box score, he was making his presence known on the field. He was doing all this while dealing with a variety of injuries, as in October alone before this game, he appeared on the injury report for a thumb injury, a neck injury, and a back injury. But he persevered and played through it all. Nothing was going to keep him off the field. And that takes us back to the game in question. October 22nd against the Titans. On the first drive of the game, the Ravens offense did Ravens offense things, because I don't know how else to explain this. Always a good sign when two minutes into the game, the fans are booing. Because of this, the Ravens are punting deep in their own territory, and the Titans wind up getting the ball in Baltimore territory. The Ravens defense needs to make a big stop here, because one first down, and we're already talking field goal. And after three plays where the Titans pick up nine and a half yards, they're facing fourth down, and decide to go for it, only needing a few inches. The good news for the Ravens is that they get the stop. It's a turnover on downs, and Baltimore is getting the ball in great field position, getting any momentum back that they lost on their opening drive. The bad news for the Ravens is that Tony Siragusa got badly injured, and what followed was the moment that maybe defined his career more than any other moment. On that fourth down play, when Siragusa was trying to make the stuff, he was blocked by fullback Lorenzo Neal and center Kevin Long, and on the play, Siragusa injured his spine. There was nothing dirty or illegal about the play whatsoever. It was just one of those unfortunate things that can happen over the course of this violent game. As Siragusa said about that injury in the aftermath, in 33 years, that was the most scared I've ever been. You always see people out there and read about them, but it's your own self. All of a sudden, things start flashing through your mind, family, and stuff like that. He laid helplessly on the ground. Syracuse said on how his body responded after the injury, My firing mechanism wasn't working. I would try to do something with my hands, and I would feel funny. I knew something was wrong. The injury was so bad that the cart was out for a solid 10 minutes, although the broadcast was in commercial for a lot of that time. I'm not repeating any footage here. The cart was legitimately out for what seemed like forever. Siragusa was barely moving, and all the movement visible on TV seemed to be strictly in the lower part of his body. The cart had to be brought out on the field. And at that moment, a lot of people thought that Siragusa's career, after over a decade in the NFL, was over. Heck, Siragusa thought at first that he was paralyzed, although he got over that thought once he could squeeze one of the trainer's hands. But Siragusa was carted off the field, laying down and not even giving the thumbs up at any point. No one knew what his future held. After he got taken back to the locker room in the cart, the diagnosis was a bruised spinal cord. For the average person, it takes somewhere in the ballpark of three to six months to recover. But for Siragusa, when he got off the cart, he tried to walk around. And after walking around for a bit, he had one question to the doctors. What do I have to do to get cleared to play again? Remember, he just got carted off the field. You never see a guy get carted off the field for an extended period of time return to action in the same game. But Siragusa, being the warrior that he was, was adamant about returning. The Ravens shuttled him off to a hospital and put him in a shock trauma unit, where he got tested. And even though he was still in a ton of pain, the tests came back negative, and that was good enough for him. After being shuttled to the hospital, the team shuttled him back to the stadium at his request and he decided that he was going to return to the game. Somehow, and I have no idea how this was even possible, but with 51 seconds left in the first half, Siragusa, after being on the ground for 10 minutes, after suffering a brutal injury to his spine, 
after being carted off the field and after being shuttled to the hospital for further testing, was back in the ballgame. And you can hear the crowd chanting Goose the moment they realized what they were seeing. Take a listen. Clock at 51 seconds. Tennessee has taken a second timeout. They've got one left. And Tony Siragusa has come back out onto the field. Now, the bad news for the Ravens on this day was that they lost, because their offense was useless, as was typical for the Ravens throughout much of the 2000 season. The Ravens put up just six points all day. They allowed a touchdown off of a pick six, they turned it over four times, and it didn't matter who was back there a quarterback for them, as both Tony Banks and Trent Dilfer were woefully inefficient. Banks finished the game throwing 32 passes and posting a passer rating of 37.1 and Dilfer finished the game throwing 13 passes and posting a passer rating of 33.5. Both of these totals are worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. But the good news was that not only did Tony Siragusa come back into the game, and not only was he fine, but he made a big impact in the second half upon his return. In the first half, after Siragusa left the game, the Titans were averaging 5 yards per carry, which is a great number for any team let alone a team going up against the 2000 Ravens. In the second half, when Siragusa returned, the Titans had 12 design runs, so 12 runs that went to the running back. On those 12 runs, the Titans picked up 28 yards. From 5 yards a carry in Siragusa's absence in the first half to 2.3 yards per carry in the second half. On 5 of those runs, the Titans either picked up no yards or lost yards, and only 2 of these runs went for more than 3 yards. When Siragusa returned, it made a monumental impact. And again, the Ravens in the second half with Siragusa on the field did not allow a single point, as the seven points the Titans scored in that half were off of a pick six. Not only did Siragusa come back, but he came back and played at a high level, as though him being carted off and seeing his career flash right before his eyes never even happened. And after the game, most of the talk was about the incredible guts that Siragusa displayed, with both sides giving him massive respect and props for doing this. His teammate, wide receiver Quadra Ismail, said on Siragusa, for him to come back like that shows you so much guts and character. In recounting the incident years later, defensive tackle Sam Adams said, we picked him up and put him in the stretcher. I'm having tears in my eyes when they wheel him off the field. Then, I see him come into the game, and I'm thinking to myself, what the hell is going on? Titans fullback Lorenzo O'Neal, who helped set the block that injured Siragusa, said, You don't want anyone to get hurt. He's a warrior. What can I say? I was relieved to see him back in there. That raises the question. Why did Siragusa return? Why did he come back in the first place? Well, he gave the answer you'd expect. Pain is a part of the game. As he said, I guess I didn't want my boys to have all the fun out there. A lot of guys play with pain and there are a lot of guys on the team I owe a lot to. I just wanted to get out there and fight. And even though the Ravens kept him out of the team's next game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, Siragusa was right back out there the following week, and was once again playing a key role in helping Baltimore establish itself as one of the greatest defenses of all time and as a world champion. Tony Siragusa is going to be remembered for a lot of things in his life, from his role as one of the great run stuffers in the game to his personality and his humorous nature and his ability to crack jokes at anything, to his contributions to a Super Bowl winning defense. But if there's any specific moment on the field that he deserved to be remembered for, it's for his incredible act of toughness in that 2000 game against the Titans. To be carted off the field and to return to the game in the same half? Unless you're being carted off because you got the wind knocked out of you, I don't know if we're ever going to see anything like that again much less for a nasty spinal injury. When Tony Siragusa retired after the 2001 season, he said, I came into this league on my terms, and I'm going to leave on my terms. He played by his rules, he marched to the beat of his own drum, and he truly was one of a kind, the likes of which we'll never see again. And I don't think any exhibit shows that better than the case of the fastest recovery from a spinal injury in NFL history. Rest in peace, Goose. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes.
Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.